is a 1957 Continental Mark II. This car matters because it's one of 3,000 Continental Mark IIs manufactured in 1956 and 1957. Each of the Ford family members was assigned a Mark II. Uh, William Clay Ford was in charge of the Mark II project. This particular automobile was originally assigned to Mrs. Edsel Ford, their mother, when it was built, and it was kept at a Ford family estate in Palm Springs, California. She had the light blue. Uh, the story is that was her favorite color. She only kept it a relatively short period of time and she really put no miles on it. A number of celebrities had these. People like Frank Sinatra, uh, President Eisenhower, Harvey Firestone, because they were $10,000 automobile at a time when you could buy three or four Fords for the price of one Continental. There are a number of them in Southern California. That's where I saw my first Continental Mark II and I fell in love with the car. And my wife did too. So when an opportunity presented to trade one car for a Mark II, we bought this one. And then we restored the car. The car is the heaviest car built in 1957. It's about 5,200 pounds. The ride is wonderful. All that weight and the long wheelbase, it just floats along. And when you need to accelerate, it has plenty of power to get out of its own way. And the engine's a 368 V8. It was 300 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque. So it's quite a powerful engine for 1957. In 57, Ford updated a lot of features mechanically. This is the first year they used the paper air filter and the cartridge oil filter. The ignition is upgraded just the way the hood shuts. You don't have to slam it. You don't have to slam anything. The designer wanted all the bright work to match. It's called flash chroming. It's a very, very thin layer of chrome over the top of stainless steel. So the chrome on the doors shines just like the chrome on the bumpers. I don't think you'll find that on any other automobile. The leather is, is from Scotland, bridge aware. It has no defects, no blemishes in it. They don't use barbed wire. The air conditioning and the heating system is quite advanced. That was the joke, you pull into the gas station and then the gas attendant would run all around back in the 50s trying to find where to put the gas lane. So it's behind the tail light. If you neglected to, to close the light after you filled your tank, it would still be fully functional as a tail light. The hump in the trunk lid is functional. It does actually cover the tire. I'm into the machinery, but the longer you have them, the people and the history of the car and what the company was doing, that actually becomes a lot more interesting, at least to me. I think it's one of the most beautiful American cars ever built. I'm Steve Duba, and this car matters.